Hi and welcome to Viper Watch. I'm Mark Economo. On a regular basis, we provide updates on what's going on inside the Boca Raton Police Department. Today, we're focusing on detective work and what goes into solving a crime. We're going to look at two cases in particular. Joining us today to talk more about it and go more in depth, we have Detective Mark Horowitz from the Boca Raton Police Department. Detective, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Good to be here. Um, first case, it started a while ago. It was pretty unique. Someone was breaking into lockers at gyms around Boca Raton and stealing the contents, putting a new lock inside. Um, um, it was going on for a while. Take us through what was happening. Well, in the beginning, it didn't seem like anything unusual. You know, another property crime. People, like you said, would go in, work out, leave their belongings, as we all do. They would change, leave their belongings in a locker, provide their own lock, go work out. Um, when they came back after, a, you know, after working out, th their things would be gone. They'd have a, uh, a different lock on their locker. So we said that was a little bit different, but, uh, you know, it was still the same. We didn't think too much of it at the time. And then the, uh, the person, if not persons, we thought, we didn't know, uh, went on a little bit of a shopping spree with the, uh, the individual's cards. Now, something like that, it's hard to trace. It's hard to find unless you have physical evidence, a picture, video surveillance, something like that. But the break in the case came with a license plate, correct? Right. We didn't have very much to go on in any of those cases. Uh, we had a number of cases that we were looking at, but like you said, we didn't, have, we didn't have that physical evidence. We didn't have any eyewitnesses. We didn't have any latents. We didn't have any video because locker rooms are, are not recorded. Mm -hmm. Thank God. But uh, we did get a break in the case when we did, uh, we were able to uh, retrieve some evidence from the town center mall, from one of the stores, and it captured a vehicle leaving with a possible suspect, and we were able to capture a license plate. And what did you do at that point? You, you trace it. <clears throat> exactly. What we do is we trace that license plate. Uh, plate. It came back to an Alamo rental car, and uh, what we did was, what I did was I subpoenaed the Alamo, got all the information about the person who actually took out that rental agreement, mm -hmm and then did as much research as possible on that person. So what we find out is actually kind of amazing. We're finding that this woman, Elsie Hobbs, is flying in and out of the airport, kind of on a day trip and going on a one-day crime spree. Right. Never, never seen anything like Elsie. Uh, I guess, you know, a lot of people were comparing her to uh, the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, Catch Me If You Can, right. with Frank Abigail Jr. Always, always one step ahead. Always right, on always one step ahead. I guess, you know, well, like you said, she would fly into town. She liked to use Fort Lauderdale International Airport. She flew into town, then she'd rent a car, and uh, the break came. You know, she rented it with her own credit card. She rented a car, then she'd drive to the nearest Home Depot, buy a pair of bolt cutters and a lock, Drive to the uh, the next drive up to Palm Beach County in mm -hmm. Boca Raton, go into a uh, you know into a fitness club. Mm -hmm. We have LA Fitness, we've got Bally's, we've got the Lifetime Athletic Club. Go in there, wait for someone I imagine who is going to start working out because it really wouldn't be too smart of her to, to to you know get somebody who was done working out. So she'd watch somebody change and begin their workout. She'd cut the lock, replace the lock, mm -hmm. take the contents and run over to the town, well, drive over to the town center mall. Before we move on to the next case really quick, one of the unique things though, I guess, the significance of changing the lock. It bought her time. What it did was uh, a lot of the policy, you know, people go in and they may put the lock on the wrong mm -hmm. locker. So instead of just going ahead and cutting it right off, they've got to verify this isn't somebody else's lock. She didn't put her, you know, the victim didn't put the lock on right. the wrong locker like she did the day before, because that does happen too. But, uh, you know, we got lucky and we had a few breaks. We were able to identify Mrs. Hobbs. Um, we found out that you know she had been doing it all around the country, mm -hmm. flying around. We subpoenaed all her records, all her airline records, and uh, she's very busy. So, and right now she's in custody in Illinois, and uh, she was there on a half a million dollars bond. And I know at last that I spoke with her probation officer, she was looking at a, a minimum sentence of nine years. All right, on to the next case. Not elaborate as this one, but still unique, unique nonetheless. People shopping at the Apple Computer Store at the Town Center Mall. Um, they're actually being targeted, but not in the traditional way. Now, uh, these uh, individuals would be actually targeted while they were inside the mall. Uh, they, they identified two individuals who would watch customers leave the Apple store with brand new computers. Um, they would then follow those individuals out of the mall and subsequently they would, you know, break into their car and steal that computer that they just purchased. And it didn't really matter where they went to, whether that was in, within the city limits of Boca Raton, or they, I have them going as far south as Davie and as far west as Coral Springs. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's always, I guess, important to know what's around you. If you're shopping, go straight home, bring your stuff, don't leave it in cars, that type of thing. I think those are pretty important factors. I know that if I bought a computer, I wouldn't take chances I'd go home. Um, because I have not, we have not identified any cases in which they went into the house. Mm -hmm. It was all vehicles, yep. and they were all nonviolent, and uh, it was all crimes that possibly could have been prevented if the uh, the victims would have just gone home, brought their computers inside their house, and, you know, 
locked it up. Right. I guess looking at the Elsie Hobbs case, looking at this case, are we seeing criminals go into new extremes to commit crimes? Well, I think, you know, what I've learned is don't expect anything that's out of the ordinary. These mm -hmm. people will go above and beyond. It's tough economic times, and, you know, they need the money, just like mm -hmm. a lot of other people, but it's not stopping them. All right, Detective Horowitz, thank you very much for thank being you. here. Appreciate it, and thank you for joining us. For all the latest news, you can log on to our website anytime, bocaviper.com, and we'll see you on the next edition of Viper Watch.